Hello, in this video, we're going to go over problem one from IMC 2020. Let n be a positive integer. Compute the number of words that satisfy all of the following. First, W consists of n letters. All of them are from alphabet A, B, C, D. W consists of an even number of letters of A. And W contains an even number of letters B. So we have even number of A's, even number of B's, but C and D could be completely arbitrary. I will give you two different solutions to this problem. The first one, I'm going to apply uh, recursion. So let's say xn is the solution to this problem. So xn is the number of uh, words of length n that the number of a's and b's are both even. I want to find the recursion. So I want to find xn plus 1 in terms of xn. So if I have a length n, that all of them are A's and B's are even, we can add a C or a D at the end of this. But it's also possible to have something that ends with A or ends with B. So that requires us to consider the sequences that have an odd number of A's or an odd number of B's. So let's basically look at three different sequences. So Xn is the number of words of length n with even a's and even number of b's. So that would be xn. yn would be the number of something similar words of length n with even number of A's and odd number of B's. Let's just st stick with that, odd number of B's. And then it would be the same if we have, if we swap it, if we swap A and B. Zn would be the number of words of length N with odd number of A's and B. So both A and B are odd. So let's find a recursion for Xn and a recursion for Yn and a recursion for Zn. And then we'll solve this. Okay, so first we want to find a recursion for Xn plus 1. So we look at a length n plus 1. We look at the last uh, term of that sequence. If the last one is either C or D, then the previous one would have to have an even number of A's and B's. So A's and B's here would be even. So that would give us twice Xn. This sequence would be Xn, and then C and D, there are two possibilities, so we have twice Xn. Plus, if it ends with A, then we would have to have odd A's and even B's. So that would give us Yn. And if it ends with B, then it would be the other way around. It would be odd B's and even A's. That would give you another Yn. Let's look at Yn plus 1 and find a recursion for Yn plus 1. So Yn plus 1 means it is of length n plus 1, and we have an odd number of A's and even number of B's. So if the last one is C or D, it's twice Yn. If the last one is A, then the previous ones would have to be even A's and even B's. So that would give us Xn. And finally, if the last one is B, we would have to have an odd number of A's and odd number of B's in the previous N terms. So that would give us Zn. Now, Zn plus 1 gives us a sequence that uh, the number of A's and B's are both odd. So if the number of A's and B's are both odd, we can look at the last one. It could be C or D. So that would give us 2Zn. If it is A, that means we have even A's here and odd B's here in order to end up with an odd number of A's and odd number of B's. So that would give us Yn. And if we end up with B here, we get another Yn. So this is a recursion for X, Xn, Yn, and Zn. Let's rewrite this recursion in a more systematic form. 
xn plus 1 equals 2xn plus 2yn, yn plus 1 equals xn plus 2yn plus zn, and finally zn plus 1 equals 2yn plus 2zn. There are a number of ways of uh, solving this equation. I want to show you one method which is of interest here and um, it's kind of a little bit of a way less known method. So we're going to use a bit of linear algebra to find x n y n z n. We can write this down as a matrix multiplication. So x n y n z n multiplied by the matrix here would be 2, 1, 0. If I multiply x, n, y, n, z, n by 2, 1, 0, I get 2x, n plus uh, 2, y, n. So I need 2 here. And then 0, z, n. This would be 1, 2, 1. And this would be 0, 2, 2. So if I want to find x, n, y, n, z, n, I would be able to take this matrix, which I will call A, and I multiply that by xn minus 1, yn minus 1, and zn minus 1. And if I repeat this, I end up with a to the power of n minus 1 times x1, y1, and z1. Now, x1, y1, z1, x1 is the number of uh, sequences of length 1 that have an even number of a's and an even number of b's. So the only way that's possible is uh, if it is either C or D. Yn is even number of A's and odd number of B's or the other way around. There's only one possibility here. We have to have A because we need an odd number of A's. And Z1, uh, you need an odd number of A's and odd number of B's, so that's actually not possible. So if we find powers of this matrix A, then we are able to find Xn. Now the way we, we can find powers of a matrix is by diagonalization. One way would be to use diagonalization. So we take the matrix A, which is, I'm going to rewrite the matrix, 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, and 0, 2, 2. We are going to diagonalize this matrix. So A minus lambda I is equal to 2 minus lambda 2, 0. And if you aren't familiar with diagonalization of a matrix, I will give you another method, which is a bit of actually a faster method of getting the solution, but I thought this method is also helpful to at least um, have seen. And finally, 0, 2, 2 minus lambda. We're going to take the determinant of this, determinant of A minus lambda I, is going to be, I'm going to expand along the first row, so we get 2 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda squared, minus 2, minus 2 times, so I'm expanding along the first row, so this entry 2 minus lambda times the determinant of the rest, which would be 2 minus lambda squared minus 2, and then minus 2 times 2 minus lambda. If I eliminate the first row and the second column, I get 2 minus lambda as a determinant. I can factor 2 minus lambda from the whole thing, I get 2 minus lambda squared minus 4. This would be 2 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus 2 times 2 minus lambda plus 2. Difference of squares. 2 minus lambda times negative lambda times 4 minus lambda. So in fact, lambda is going to be 0, 2, and 4, which means this matrix is in fact diagonalizable. Now let's evaluate uh, eigenvectors for this matrix and then that would give us the diagonalization. For lambda equals 0, we know that the eigenvector would be of dimension 1, so we have 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, so that's the matrix, and 0, 2, 2. And I want to find something that when I multiply this by x, y, z, I get 0, 0, 0. Now we could apply row operations, so if you take the first row and subtract um, twice the second row from the first row, we get 0, 
negative 2, negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 2. So I multiplied the second row by negative 2 and added by added to the first row. And that gives me this. So now the first and third row are um, multiples of each other. So I can eliminate one of the rows. I can maybe multiply this one, add this uh, third row uh, to the first row. I get this. And that gives me a simpler, re simpler system. We get x plus 2y plus z equals 0 and y plus z equals 0. So this gives us a solution which is y1 z negative 1 and x also negative 1. So that would be one solution. Next we're going to plug in lambda equals 2. Lambda equals 2. We get so a minus lambda i becomes 0, 0, 0. All the diagonal entries were 2. And then I would get 2, 0, 1, 1. And finally 0, 2. So now clearly the first and third row are the same. So um, I get the equation y equals 0 and x plus z equals 0. So one solution would be 1, 0, negative 1. That's one of the eigenvectors. And finally, lambda equals 4. So I'll have to subtract 2 from the diagonals of the above matrix. I would get this. Now I will do row, uh, row 1 plus twice row 2. And that gives me 0. So I'm going to keep row 2. So that gives me 0, minus 2, and 2, which obviously it's this multiple of the last row. So we get the equation would be x minus 2y plus z equals 0, and y minus z equals 0. So one solution to this would be when y and z are both 1, and when y and z are both 1 and x is also 1, we get one solution. So finally, the matrix A becomes... So we have eigenvalues are two, 0, 2, and 4. Eigenvector here is 1, 1, 1. We found it for 4. We found 1, 0, negative 1. And we have to do an inverse here. And we also have negative 1, 1, negative 1, 4, ne uh, four 0. And then we'll have to multiply this one by negative 1, 1, negative 1. 1, 0, 1, negative 1, and 1, 1, 1, inverse of that, and this is our matrix A. Finally, we'll have to take this matrix and raise it to the power of n, so a to the power of, or n minus 1 rather, a to the power of n minus 1 will become this matrix, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, times this 1 to the power of n, which would be the diagonal entries are going to be raised to the power of n, and then the inverse of the first matrix, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And then when you multiply by the vector that we got, we, were, we will be able to find x n, y n, and z n, and x n would be our answer. Okay, so I won't go over the details of the calculation, but this is the idea. Now, I want to give you a, uh, another solution, a little bit of a better solution. So what I want to do is I want to figure out the ones that are of length n and the number of a's and b's are odd. So every, every um, word that we have is going to be a combination of a's, b's, c's, and d's, something like this. Now, what I can do is that if at a position I have C or D, I can say, well, there are two possibilities for that position. So I'm going to use some sort of a generating function. So I will take 2 plus A plus B raised to the power of N. When you multiply N copies of this, 2 plus A plus B multiplied by itself N times 
every word here gives us one of those kinds of permutations. Instead of two, we can replace that position by C or D. So for example, for n equals three, we will get things like this, two A, B, or we get two, two, A, or we get two, two, two. So this guy corresponds to C, A, B, and D, A, B. This guy corresponds to four different words, C, C, A, C, D, A, D, C, A, and D, D, A. And this guy corresponds to eight different words. Now, what is the benefit of doing that? If I replace A and B by one, I will count every single word. And the answer would be four to the power of N. And of course, we have four to the power of N words of length N. I don't want to replace A and B both by one because I want to isolate the ones that the number of A's and B's are even. So let's look at this polynomial. So I'm going to call this polynomial P of A comma B. Now I'm going to replace A by one. If I replace A by one, that will give me three plus B to the power of N. But I want to eliminate the ones that there are an odd number of A's. So if I, cons if I consider P of negative one comma B, which is one plus B to the power of N, every term that has an odd number of um, odd number of a's would become negative. Here, every term that has an odd number of a's would be positive. So if I add these p of 1 comma b plus p of negative 1 comma b, that counts only the ones that a occurs even number of times. But that counts it twice. Now, I get a new polynomial. And this polynomial, which I, if I call p of q, uh, q of b, gives me all of the terms that b appears even number of times or odd number of times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the same idea. I'm going to evaluate q of 1 plus q of negative 1 and I'm going to divide by 2. The terms that power of b is even, they're going to appear twice. The terms that power of b is odd are going to cancel. So if I evaluate this, I would get exactly the answer to the problem. So this would be p of 1 comma 1 plus p of negative 1 comma 1 so this is q of 1 plus p of negative 1 comma negative 1 plus p of 1 comma negative 1 and all of that divided by 4 so this would be the answer to the problem let's evaluate this p of 1 comma 1 would be p of a comma b is 2 plus a plus b so that would be 4 to the power of n plus this would be 2 to the power of n, this would be 0 to the power of n, and that would be 2 to the power of n. And then I'll have to divide that by 4. So this is 4 to the power of n plus twice 2 to the power of n divided by 4, which would be 4 to the power of n minus 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1. And that is the answer to the problem. Now I'm sure this problem has other solutions, so if you have any other solution to this problem, feel free to post it in the comments section of the video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.